talking about that, of course, the big news to come out today, um, Boris Johnson finally confirmed the news that we've all been waiting for, especially people here in the UK when it comes to going out and all that good stuff. England festivals and nightclubs will be allowed to reopen from July 19th, right? Say that again. England festivals and nightclubs will be allowed to open from July 19th. I cannot wait. Now, don't get me wrong. The past couple of years have been really frustrating seeing all my, you know, um, e-friends and social media buddies um, in places like Berlin and stuff and parts of the States like New York, whatever, you know, hamming it up and having a great time. Nightlife is reopened. You're seeing Boston Nova Civic Club nowadays, places in Berlin like Club Division there and all this stuff like completely full and people dancing and having a good time. You're like, damn, man, why can't that be me? Or why can't that be us? Especially parts of Europe where we were kind of ahead of them. I think America, we kind of had to like, you know, you can't really compare what we're doing here to what they're doing in the States. They, were, they weren't necessarily taking that virus seriously seriously from the minute from the minute one but in terms of our kind of rollout of the vaccine we were kind of in a good place it felt like things were kind of getting back to normal and suddenly we hit a bit of a road bump and then all the other european countries overtook us and now we have like parties in paris like possessions have finally started up again and they're doing really great stuff and of course the stuff over there happening in berlin's happening there was i think someone shared a picture i saw recently on reddit of like a party happening in stockholm that looked amazing so places are reopening really quickly um, obviously kind of well, quickly about back to back Amsterdam obviously had a really good party a big one happening over the last couple of weekends uh, Dixon obviously played there recently so it's just been a bit you know I wouldn't say FOMO but you just feel a little bit jealous like, damn man I wish that could be me I, I know exactly like I don't exactly like feel like going on a trip anytime soon I think the first I might do is maybe sometime into September onwards but I don't really you know I've not really got the travel bug yet just right just at the moment I'm sure once I go out and I start communicating with people and hanging out in different spaces that travel bug will Will kind of get bitten again or travel bag will kind of bite me once again but for now i'm more than happy with just staying you know on the uk shores and partying but this is such a good news to come finally we had some light in the tunnel and we're feeling like we have a resolution again things have to be confirmed i think on the 12th for stuff to be open but so far so good. Let's read the news here from Resident Advisor. It said the UK government's going ahead with this latest phase of its reopening plan. In a press conference this afternoon, Mr. Uh, sorry, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson confirmed this government plans to remove all the almost all remaining COVID-19 restrictions on July 19th. The news which signals the reopening of festivals and nightlife in England comes as the UK is suffering from another spike in COVID-19 cases. Johnson stresses that it's safer to remove the restrictions now than to wait until winter. The plan will be reassessed and reconfirmed on July 12th. So, the only thing I would say, a word of caution, it looks like this government is supremely cautious when it comes to reopening stuff and loosening restrictions, which... It's somewhat annoying on a selfish point of view, but in terms of looking after people and obviously, you know, the thinking of the greater good and all that stuff, it makes complete sense. But of course, unfortunately, they're in a position now where something I've mentioned a few times in the podcast where they finally start to have that. They stand, it feels like they finally started to ask themselves the question of how many deaths is enough to justify us reopening. And it's a really crass and a really heartless and a really painful proposition to even point especially when those people are losing family members and people that they love but unfortunately we can't necessarily live in a world where we're just going to hope that everybody gets vaccinated because you know not everyone's going to want to take up the vaccinations and we also don't live in we also can't envision a world where we're going to have single digit deaths or maybe none whatsoever it just doesn't seem that likely so what they have to do the compromise has to be made is like you know what we might as well just open it now whilst the deaths in the cases aren't as bad as they could be so that we can kind of learn to somewhat live with COVID going forward. And again, it's brutal to think about it, but unfortunately that is the reality of the situation. And then you think about it in terms of just from the business standpoint in the sector and it comes to hospitality and nightlife and all that stuff. There are festivals and clubs that have, you know, mostly, I would imagine there's a few that were that basically went out of business when the first sort of like Freedom Day thing got scrapped, which was what, June 23rd or 22nd, right? So some of the places didn't even survive this like new revised date. So think about how bad these people feel. Think about how gutting and much of a gut punch that is in general to be in a position where you felt like you finally held on and you could have opened in June. Then obviously that got paused because of the spike in cases or the, I think that was the Delta variant. That's why it got paused, right? And then now there's a new date in the 19th and there's still a lot of kind of 
of um, terms and conditions attached to it in terms of us reopening. It's such a precarious position to be in if you're a business owner and you own a venue or you, uh, you know, you're, you're part of a festival group or whatever it may be. It's really, really, really stressful. I can only imagine. So again, for us as ravers, as people that are just customers or even myself as like a freelance, um, no, what, what would you call it? Yeah, as like a freelancer, I guess, or somebody that was, you know, you go in and DJ in places. We don't really have, you know, there's, of course, it matters a lot to us in order for us to get these places reopened, but there's not as much on, like, on the line for us, right? If they don't reopen, we just have to wait until it does reopen, or if you've got the funds and the ability to travel, you can just go to another country and go and party. But if you've got a place in a club and you solely rely on having patrons pay an entry fee and buy drinks at the bar and stuff and you know there's all these flipping terms and conditions being placed on when you can reopen it must be annoying and stressful to think of another because again all these places had really big reopening weekend plans right um for the first round for the first date that was put forth in terms of reopening stuff for freedom day now they're gonna have to do another set of plans and also keep in mind or keep in the back of the head that that could change you know at a blink of an eye and it could be scrapped once again it continues to say as of July 19th, nightclubs and festivals will be allowed to operate at full capacity and without mandatory mask wearing or proof of vaccination. Other changes, such as a full vaccinated adults not needing to isolate after traveling to ambulance countries will also be implemented again, which opens up all the different countries. Um, this loosening of restrictions was initially planned for June 21st but was delayed due to the threats of the variant. Although the number of cases in the UK is at its peak since January 2021, Johnson is ready to allow people to make their own informed decisions about how to manage the virus. 86% of adults in the UK have had at least one dose of the vaccine. 86% of adults. Well, that's a really weird stat because it means 86% of adults doesn't mean all adults in the UK, right? Um, that's only the adults that have actually taken the vaccine. Blah, blah, blah. Cool, whatever. So we're in a precarious position, right? The precarious position is... You wait for everyone to get vaccinated. There's one option. Yeah, there's an option where you somehow try and get everybody vaccinated, which may take you, what, up until Christmas, maybe the new year, who knows. But then there's also no guarantee that there's not going to be some new variant that might pop up out of nowhere that might not be, you know, created or kind of the media might not spin into some being an issue that it probably isn't. Who knows? But regardless, there's no guarantee that that's going to be a surefire plan. Or you open up now when the cases are spiking again all right there's a this is where we're in the kind of third wave now people are saying right from what i've read from what scientists are saying so it's a serious business loads of cases um i think i heard today brochure say the, the the link between cases and deaths or hospital whatever isn't necessarily broken but it's still there which is odd to say because it kind of puts into it kind of makes you question why we're reopening on the 19th if the cases are spiking there's still deaths we're not able to disassociate deaths with cases but i just guess they have to kind of take the best possible option at the worst possible time, isn't it? And they're probably thinking, you know what? Let's just open now, even though the numbers are horrible. If we wait any longer, the numbers might be so crazy. It would be like, you know, it would be kind of inhumane to reopen the economy again. And then people will be even more depressed and more angry, more fed up and all this sort of stuff. So it's a really precarious and unfortunate position to be in if your position. Like I said, you couldn't pay me enough to have that job. But again, this is what you're in there for, isn't it? This is what you're meant to be in there for. So looking forward to July 19th. Cannot wait to get back on a dance floor. Cannot wait to be shuffling and dancing around with all my friends and family and all that good stuff. And yeah, it's just going to be an absolute whale of a time, isn't it? really is going to be weird. I think that, like I said before, I'm really curious to see what the kind of, um, what the kind of turnout will be like. I'm really, dub I'm really kind of skeptical about this idea that it's going to be like the roaring twenties again. I have a feeling that there's going to be a prevalence of people who kind of, you know, would you would expect to see in nightclubs, people who kind of, you know, live uh, like myself, mostly at night, right? You live for the nightlife culture and stuff. They will obviously go out, but I think there is a wide, there is a rate, there is a probably a bigger range of people, regular folk who have probably just moved on from going out all the time on the weekend they've probably picked up new hobbies they probably filled that void with other things that they want to do so people kind of i think underestimate how much those people add to the overall numbers of people that go outdoors and just the general vibe and the feeling and i think the reason why i say that is because over the weekend obviously i went to watch england um successfully beat ukraine 4 nil in the quarterfinals of the euro 2020s and even though it felt busy outdoors it wasn't as I didn't feel as much trade and commerce and, 
exchanging of money and just kind of you know that energy that tourism brings to a city it didn't really exist see a lot of people kind of hanging around and walking around in circles because you know there's you know there's much better things to do in your life than be sat at home so why not go and walk around a shopping mall or go around a town center or whatnot that makes complete sense but i didn't necessarily feel the same sort of vibe and electricity that you generally do feel in london when it's open as per usual you know prior to covid it felt as if like you know for the most part the heartbeat of the city has kind of somewhat been uh quietened or dampened somewhat i don't know the pulse is just not there as it was before so i have a feeling that might translate to clubs and we might see again all the club kids will be there but in terms of the the average consumer who just kind of pops in because they've got nowhere else to go or the person that travels from a place in europe where maybe they don't have as good of a dance music scene as we have coming over i think they really do add to the nights and add to the, the kind of atmosphere and without them you're going to definitely dif notice a difference now it might be a good thing it might actually change the way you kind of rave and how people interact with their spaces and stuff i don't know it might change how djs play it might just might change how people program certain events because i'm sure certain places like e1 and stuff when they book certain tech house djs they're hoping for a contingent of like you know italian tourists or italian expats or spanish people or french people to come into their clubs and play but again during covid who's to say all those people are still here in this country i don't know have they all gone back home to go because again italy was hit quite hard with covid right you would imagine if you're a club kid and your family live in, I don't know, some small town somewhere that doesn't really have any close links to, you know, doesn't have any close connections to any kind of hospitals or shops and stuff. You want to go back and just help your family, innit? You feel bad to just stay here and do your thing. I guess it's different if you live in a very much important city. But if you live, if you're from a really small country town or countryside, you want to obviously be there for your fam. So I think a lot of people have probably gone back home. They probably decided maybe when they're back home, they decided, you know what, maybe London isn't this, isn't what it all cracks up to be. It's not the city or the land paved with gold and milk and honey pouring out, on the, out of the trees and shit. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's hard work to live and survive in this city. Um, it's even harder when you don't have the ability to earn money and to move around as you need to be with the restrictions in place. So I don't know. I've got a feeling it's going to be different. It'll probably be for the best. Personally, for me, selfishly, I don't care how different it is. I just want to be on the dance floor again. I want to hear music really loud. I want to see DJs play. I want to see crazy people's outfits. I want to see people in their crazy outfits. I want to see just a whole melange of flipping people from all over the world celebrating, having a good time under one roof. You know, not really talking about politics too much and just focusing on the music. Not talking about all the shitty stuff that's going on in the world. Just focusing on the music, having a good dance. You know, um, bumming a cigarette off somebody in a smoking area. I don't smoke uh, all that nonsense stuff that you get up to that just makes evening so much fun i can't wait to go back out and do man i really can't wait